Yo, what up? This is D-Night, and you're listening to the Pardon the Interaction podcast. My, oh, my, we've had so much going on. Uh, for starters, in case you missed it, we've got a new addition to the Par and Pie family, Tara Dublin. Make sure you go follow her on Twitter at Tara Dublin Rocks. Also, pick up a copy of her book while you're at it. Make, make her day, The Sound of Settling. A very fun and interesting read compared to the things we talk about on this podcast. <laughs> But yeah, we're heading toward the do or die time for the 2024 election. Go ahead and hit up JoeBiden.com. Get that man like a dollar a month or something. Help his campaign staff up and get prepared to try and save our democracy. And make sure to grab like one other person you know and tell them about the podcast. Make sure they subscribe and tune in every single week. We got a lot of things coming up for you this year. We need all the support that we can get. So if you do your part and help us grow our audience, we'll do our part and help elect Joe Biden in 2024 and save American democracy. And this is the Part of the Interaction Podcast. My stepmother in law is upset when I told her I had a podcast. She's like, What if people from work listen? I'm like, I don't fucking care. Eh. Yeah, what are they gonna they're gonna do? Fire you? You're the head of legal, you'll sue them. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bad joke. Um I'm like, that sounds like so much work. <laughs> Which is exactly why they'd want to fire me. <laughs> One, two, three, four. And we're back. <laughs> so the Gang of Eight uh, has also begun. With... Do I need to explain what the Gang of Eight is exactly? Do people not know? I mean, I feel I, like anyone yeah. listening to this podcast probably knows. Explain it anyway. All right. It is um a colloquial term. For the eight leaders of Congress that include specifically the Speaker of the House, the Senate Majority Leader, the House Minority Leader, the Senate Minority Leader, and the ranking members of the House and Senate Intelligence Community. Yeah, that adds up to eight. Okay, great. Nailed it. (laughs) Those individuals have been receiving access to the first tranche of classified documents found in the possession of Trump, Biden, and Pence after they left office. DOJ had previously rejected the committee's request to turn over the documents, saying they were part of an active investigation. So I would guess that at hmm. this point, given that members They don't need of, them anymore, huh? Huh, oh, I wonder oh. what, what the implications of that are. Maybe this investigation has moved so far along that it doesn't matter what members of Congress now know about those specific documents. So... Um, I, I guess you could take that to mean that it's entirely possible that indictments are coming. Indictments. Indictments are coming. Jeez, and that wasn't that that's even like we don't even have time to get into Fannie Willis. Just kidding. I see it. That's that's a bullet point for later. Yeah, it's on but, there somewhere. Man, he's getting so many indictments coming. <laughs> let's, let's keep it coming. Yeah, I can't wait till Jack Smith indicts his ass so I can play O Fortuna again on the podcast. I'm looking forward to that. If you and if you don't know what that is, it's um all right anyway yeah, i know that yeah that's my jam um for when bad things happen to trump oh yes yes you play that frequently on the, but i knew it before well, that, that. At one time at least yeah so um on on to more fuckery trump has so far failed to file personal financial disclosures with the uh, Federal Election Commission, despite multiple extensions, the deadline was March 16th. As we are recording this, it is currently April 11th. So he, there's a 30 day deadline. He has until April 16th to file until uh, there will be uh, financial penalties imposed. Sadly, those penalties are fairly low, but still. But still. Penalties don't matter to someone who never pay them. <laughs> well, you say that. But he's gonna have to pay up in New York when when uh, Letitia gets through his ass. Um, of note, <laughs> Special Counsel Jack Smith is also scrutinizing his political action committed committee activities post the twenty twenty election. So all the money he raised um, after his the after the twenty twenty election, but before he announced for president uh, late last year. Uh, those activities are being scrutinized by law enforcement as well. So, <laughs> yeah, man. It's funny. The whole time I was like, how is he getting away with this? 
<laughs> oh, yeah, you forgot that they're actually looking at the money part of this, too, didn't you? Yep. So some something to look forward to. I mean, he's already been indicted on in financial crimes in New York. I mean, more to come. More to come. The New York Supreme Court Justice Arthur Ingeron has ordered Trump's accounting firm, Whitley Penn, to hand over tax documents and financial records to New York Attorney General Letitia James after months of delays by Trump's team. The documents are reportedly at the center of her $250 million fraud lawsuit. So, you know, should she win, he will have to pay some penalties in that. The firm had previously said that they wouldn't comply with James's order without a court order. It has so been ordered and they shall comply. Please conduct yourself accordingly. <laughs> Sorry. As we've discussed, that's legal for fuck you. <laughs> I wonder if people have had even forgotten that he was being sued by Letitia James because we just don't we don't bring her up enough on this podcast. And I feel like on the Twitter where our um, online lives are most prevalent, we don't we don't bring her up enough there. But yeah, yeah, right. Tish Tish is uh, she's hammering hammering him where it hurts. Yep. I'm, I forgot about her coming for for the pockets. Yeah, Bragg is, is is going after him in, in the criminal department and James is going after him in the pocketbook. You know, She's making sure he can only afford like the Rudy's Giuliani of the world, but they're not <laughs> licensed to practice law. <laughs> <laughs> At least in That's New York. I don't know if he's licensed anywhere else, honestly. Pretty but funny. this is a New York case, isn't it? Ha, uh, Rudy, 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 Rudy. Well, it's also been reported that Fonnie Willis could be seeking an indictment of Trump and a number of his allies in Georgia under the state's racketeer influence and corrupt organization statute. That's the Rico, Rico um, for everyone out there listening. Um, it, it appears Trump is finally going to be Rico subject to the Rico. Law. Rico law. There's supposed to be an echo there, but we don't. We're, I'm not going to include that effect on the podcast. Just use your oh, fucking imagination. La, 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 la. Yep. After all this time, Trump might finally actually get recode. It's it's impossible to believe. Um. Well, and that's partly because look, state. Um. Well, a number of state Rico laws are easier to prove than like the the federal shit. Um, also, uh, there's a whole plot concerning Trump and his people in Georgia trying to get Secretary of State to commit voter fraud and, and just count a bunch of fake votes that don't exist to give Trump a state, which is it's also actually pretty fucking stupid of Trump to try and make that happen in Georgia. Like, I get the idea that, like, he needed more electoral college votes to either get the win or just get enough votes so that. Biden didn't have a clear majority, but also like you needed more states than Georgia. So like you needed to get guarantees from all the states and you were just like focusing on Georgia. That was pretty fucking stupid. Yeah, America. but he's his plan was kind of like act now and like plan like just this. step. This is the only step that matters now. I mean, he was hammering yeah, he, every he'll figure it out after. Yeah, like. Exactly. They were hammering away. At every option, that's a bad, um, that's not a good analogy or metaphor, rather. But <laughs> yeah, I they imagine, were, well, I they imagine the plan everybody. was to get Raffensburger to flip the election for him in Georgia, and then he could use that as evidence to say, Hey, like Wisconsin, Arizona, like, see what happened in Georgia, you can do this too, you can do it too. I guess that was the plan. You're generous to ascribe a plan to him. But yes, he has. He did have a plan. I guess he he, he was involved. His <laughs> plans heavily. are like loosely organized thoughts that might constitute an idea for the rest of us. But for him, it was a plan. Um, yeah. So nearly 20 people have been notified that they are targets in that investigation and they can face charges. Individuals from Rudy Giuliani all the way up to David Schaefer, the head of the Georgia Republican Party. So. Again, more charges to look forward to in the future. Should they indict a shit ton of people in, in Georgia, even if it doesn't necessarily include Trump off the bat? So David Kemp isn't in there, right? We were discussing no, him last week. He's going to be, he's Brian. Brian Kemp, yeah. 
he's been cooperating, so I would assume that he would be one of the people who won't be receiving a target letter. We were just discussing last week whether he would want to protect people being prosecuted by the... Anyway. No, he gave up the goods to Fani, so I don't think he has anything to worry about. I was going to say excellent, but fuck him too. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, he's still a piece of shit and like a terrible anti-democratic motherfucker but like at least he's cooperating with law enforcement so i guess we i mean i won't pat him on the back for that but like i congratulations on meeting the bare minimum responsibilities of the job good job fucker uh fox news more fuckery more fuckery they are currently facing a trial in the 1.6 billion dollar defamation lawsuit with dominion voting systems they had privately settled a separate defamation case with Venezuelan businessman. Uh, excuse me if I mispronounce this. I don't know if it's a hard or soft. My jet. head, Khalil. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. Is it my my head? My head. I don't I'm, know. I'm assuming Brazilian. it's my head. I'm assuming head. it's a soft J. My head. My head. My head. Khalil. Khalil. Last week, after he was ensnared in voting machine conspiracy theories put forth by Lou Dobbs and Sidney Crackenhead Powell in 2020. Khalil was described on Dobbs' show as a, quote, key player in a voting machine scheme tied to late Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez to rig the 2020 election. So from beyond the grave, the ghost of Hugo Chavez was trying to rig presidential elections. For a corporatist, for a corporate centrist, I'm sure he would do that. Yeah, make it make sense. <laughs> Dobbs later described it on Twitter as a cyber Pearl Harbor at the 2020 election. Oh Wait, does he not know that people died at Pearl Harbor? <laughs> and, yeah, you know, well, it, it, um, it sounds like it led to him Join. losing his show. Well, Pearl Harbor led to us led to the United States joining the war against the Axis powers in World War II. Um, these dipshit ass quotes led to Lou Dobbs' show getting canceled in February of 2021. Womp womp. Womp womp. A judge also ruled today that Fox Fake News could not argue that it broadcast false information about <laughs> Dominion voting systems on the basis that the allegations were newsworthy, which limited a key defense for the network as the trial is set to begin next week. I I believe I said last week that that defense was bullshit. Well, you were totally accurate, and the judge agreed with you. They won't even let them present that defense at trial. So um, this is just more evidence how, of how fucked Fox News is. Like, you know, no one's been fucked like this since Trump went on the honeymoon with Jared and Ivanka. Ew. <laughs> I don't want to think about Jared and Ivanka doing it. Well, doing doing daddy. Yes, my joke was that I don't even want I don't even want to picture Jared and Ivanka together. Like, <laughs> well, you don't I have can't to imagine it. it. I, I would imagine they haven't had sex together in a long time, if ever, um, unless someone else was present, because that's how cuckoldry works. Uh, the judge also ruled that Dominion could not refer to the one six insurrection except in very narrow circumstances. So I guess that's a slight minor victory for Fox News in that department. Like Dominion can't hammer the in, the fact that Fox News's lies directly influenced the behavior of people and led to insurrection on one six. They can only do that in a narrow scope. So, you know, pros and cons. Yeah, but they should be able to argue. No, okay, fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was going to think of some far fetched argument. Don't you worry. Bad. An attorney for Dominion also alleged today that Fox withheld information that would have entitled Dominion to obtain more of Rupert Murdoch's communications. Well, the lawyer saying that he'd been led to believe that Murdoch held the title of officer only for Fox News' parent company. But he had learned over the recent days that Murdoch also holds the title of officer for Fox Fake News itself. Yep, so he was lied to about the position that, that Murdoch supposedly has in the company. And and if Dominion had known that, they would have been entitled to even more of his damning fucking communications as if they didn't get enough. But yeah, that's that 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 looks very bad. Uh, the judge clearly frustrated said that regarding his ruling that narrow or a previous ruling that had narrowed the scope of the case that he could have made an entirely wrong decision. 
He then went on to say that Fox has a credibility problem. You don't. A credibility problem? Fucking say. Huh. They're on the the business end of a defamation suit of which they could lose at minimum $1.6 billion. It's not great when it, even the judge is like, hey, guys, <laughs> you got some problems here. Um, and, and this judge is supposedly known to be mild mannered. So the fact that he is like losing his shit with these people is, is no small detail. Um, and we couldn't even like keep up with the Fox news news. Was <laughs> well, this, all this podcast rolled in. Yeah. As we're like recording this podcast, there's like just multiple. It's just more Fox news shit coming out at like more of the texts coming out. <laughs> like. So Fox News is embroiled in a separate legal scandal with uh, former employee Abby Grossberg, who said in the an amended legal complaint that Fox News failed to provide Dominion with multiple recordings she made of Rudy Giuliani and other Trump allies, admitting that they had no proof to support their election lies. So <laughs> they basically hid evidence that they knew existed. Instead of turning it but over. But more importantly, we have, do we know whether that evidence now exists? Um, well, we know it exists we'll now, out. but Fox News knew it existed at the time. This is this but is does the it al- still exist? Do we know if it <laughs> still exists? Uh, that's totally fair. This because is my, like this might come out soon. It's gonna be good. This is some Alex Jones level shit where it's like, I know it's bad, but like if you don't turn it over in discovery, it's even worse for you. So maybe turn over the fucking evidence. And part of the reason look, it's part of the insurrection podcast. You're like, Oh, presumably this is a podcast about the fucking insurrection. Why the fuck do y'all keep on talking about Fox news? It didn't have anything. Well, they have plenty to do with the insurrection. Like without them laundering Trump's fucking lies for months, if not years, and brainwashing their fucking audience and then telling them that the 2020 election was rigged. Like if they had just told the truth that Biden had won and that Trump was lying, we wouldn't have had a fucking January 6th. So, so fuck these fucking people. Fuck them. Fuck them indeed. Sorry, I'm sleeping. I was yawning. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, fuck them with no lube. Mm. Um, in places that hurt. Um, okay. All right. Let's con- let's continue on. Lindsey Graham of note appears to have recently underwent a physical transformation, appearing slightly more orange than usual and with much blonder, slick back hair. He looks like a little tiny Trump. A very petite little guy, little Lindsey. Apparently pets do take after their masters. But um t- Sorry, I ruined your delivery. <laughs> okay, Carol, have you actually seen him lately? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> do you, do you approve of his orange tint or? No, it's weird. Why is he orange? It's just like <laughs> it's 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 very strange. It's some weird shit. Um, and you know, considering the fact that he's wearing what appears to be a blonde wig and orange makeup. Uh, if these laws pass in, in Florida, he will um, legally not be allowed to enter the state. Uh, it's sad because it might be true. I have not had time to read the, the Florida proposed law. Yeah, no, it's not great. It, just trust me on that. Um, I, I believe you. That it is not great. Is it possible Lindsey Graham went on some vacation to a tanning booth? <laughs> Paid for by Harlan Crow. <laughs> he flew him a- across the country on his private jet and and then and had him on his multi million dollar yacht, which probably it feels like he's it. not being invited on any private yachts. To to me, it's like he's uh getting beat up in the in the back of congressional chambers or I, I don't know. No, nah, I doubt that. Like he might actually enjoy that. Um, yeah. So Maybe. after, after this in, in other fuckery uh, over the past week, Trump apparently seems to have lost his mind on Easter Sunday where he untruthed the statement 
World War Three. In a manner befitting a former president spreading messages of peace and prosperity. Uh, he was really losing his shit on True Social yeah. this weekend. Does he think the whole world cares about him? Well, he was having a rough week, Carol. Like, he had been arraigned, well, indicted the week before, and then he was arraigned in Manhattan. Uh, he got perp walked, although he didn't have to do that with in handcuffs. Um, you know, Have you ever had a rough week, D? <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> Not like that. We've all had rough weeks, and I've never called for war. <laughs> well, you know, he was arraigned. Um, his wife was nowhere to be found. You know, she wasn't there, like, holding down the fort in, in his time of need, these dire circumstances. Oh, he has every right to loathe his life, as we all loathe him. But... I'm not going to say what he should do, but most people would just shut the fuck up in his position. You would think. Just, just shut the fuck up. Let's see. I have one of his his truths here. I guess I can read it in, in my limited fake Donald J. Trump voice. Give, give me one second to prepare. <clears throat> Hillary, Hillary Clinton. All right. There we go. That's all I need to do. And then I got it. the box is hoax. Where I did nothing wrong, but Biden did. It's just another way for the Democrats to cheat on elections through, in this case, electoral interference. I'm covered in cheat. I mean, I'm covered by the Presidential Records Act. And unlike Biden, who is not president, had the power to declassify. My people are being threatened and harassed by a thug prosecutor who was put in place by Biden Trump haters. Our legal system is corrupt and the Democrats are using it to rig to two G's the 2024 presidential election or election way up in polls. Yeah, Trump is definitely up in some polls. We don't know which guy's polls he's up in, but he's up in them. Definitely not presidential polls. All right, Carol, do you um, have a nomination for the shithole of the week award? I'm going to honor Ty with a proxy vote because she <laughs> wanted to nominate uh, the not guy. The Texas governor. The, guy, the Texas Abbott. governor is you know, he's fascist. Wheelchair yeah, guy. For some fucking shit. Um, so Greg Abbott's proposal was to uh, immediately upon the conviction of this fucker who just murdered a a Black Lives Matter protester in cold blood and in apparently premeditated fashion. Greg Abbott presented the idea of issuing that individual a pardon. Greg Abbott, like for presenting the idea of enticing your supporters, your your fellow Republican voters of of murdering innocent protesters and being rewarded with the or rather rewarded with a state pardon. Uh, I, I hereby award you the fucking shithole of the week award. You deserve it, you piece of shit. Piece of shit. Fuck you. Yep, Carol, do you have... <laughs> Congratulations to Greg Abbott, your first time winner of that award. Carol, do you have any closing thoughts this evening? Um, I'm just going to read this meme that popped up on my Instagram. That's going to... Let's just pretend it's legal advice. Go for it. If If you get a loan at a bank... You'll be paying it back for 30 years. If you rob a bank, you'll be out in 10 years. Follow me for more financial advice. Okay. <laughs> what is this? The uh the Trump University School of Financing? What are we doing, Carol? I, I just want to make sure everyone remembers. I think I've probably told this story before about about how I was working in a Trump building, in the building where Trump University was while it was still open. And I went down there and trolled them and it was fun. Ah, I see what you did there. Okay, I perfect did. times. Um, yeah. So as for my closing thoughts, you'll have to hear Justin Pearson speaking this Easter Sunday. Yay. These people I know yeah. fought a war to be called equal. Yeah. Were treated and faced with a white lash after there was seeming progress for black people. Yeah. Tell you about the people I know who survived in a state like Tennessee where the Ku Klux Klan was founded. Yeah. 
I'll tell you about the persecuted people I know uh -huh. who were told that they had to go to colored signs and deal with white signs in their faces. I'll tell you about yeah. a persecuted people I know yeah. who were told that their dollar was good enough to spend but they couldn't sit at the lunch counter with you. I'll tell you yeah. about a persecuted yeah. people I know yeah. who day after day faced the threat of lynching because white people still believe that they didn't have any reason to respect the voices or the opinions of black people. I'll tell you about a persecuted people I know. Yeah. We had to deal with the reality like Mary Turner, John Turner being hung on a tree. Yeah. Her raising her voice as a black woman to fight for his dignity and she was lynched. Yeah. And the baby was cut out of her stomach and stumped to death. Let me tell you about a persecuted people I know yeah. who dealt with the crack epidemic started by Ronald Reagan in order to fund a guerrilla war down in South America and then mass incarceration that was led after that. Let me tell you about a persecuted people I know who dealt with housing inequality every single time that we're here in redlining that ensures that Valero Energy Corporation and Newcor Steel Corporation and all these pipelines and all these decisions of, of where pollution goes gets in our community. Let me tell you about a persecuted people I know who still believe in a prophecy of a Jesus who tells us that even amidst persecution, even when a mispersecution, when they try and break you down into nothing, even a mispersecution, when they tell you that you're nobody and that you don't have a name, even a mispersecution, when they tell you there'll be nobody on your side, even a mispersecution, yes, there is still a prophecy to believe yes. that our days are still getting better yes, because the Spirit of God has not left us yes. nor forsaken us. Yes. Because indeed they lynched him on a Friday. Indeed they thought they had all of it lost and all of the injustices gained on a Friday. They thought that it was all over on silent Saturday. They said finally we don't have to hear anything else about gun violence. Finally we don't have to hear anything else about poor people. Finally we don't have to hear anything else about sick people. They, 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 they were happy on Saturday. But oh God had a different plan to fulfill a prophecy to each and every one of us yeah. 2023 or so years later yeah. that resurrection is always coming yeah. resurrection is a promise yeah. resurrection is a guarantee yeah. that no matter how dark the days are on that Friday how sad those days are on Saturday there's a promise that Sunday is always coming resurrection is always on the way. Resurrection is always promised. Let them beat. Let them lynch. Let them expel. Let them kick out. Let them do what they must. There's a promise that Sunday's resurrection is on the way. And that concludes this episode of Paul Insurrection.